Welcome, welcome uh, back to Space Society Podcast, and we're back with another episode with JT. It's been a while, so yeah, we just uh, start the incantation. Oh, my God, I'm going to end this year. Yeah, I'm going to end this year. Yeah, I'm going to end this year. Yeah, I'm going to end this year. Shri Guru Veda Maha. Shri Chaitanya Omanu Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swami Pakadamayam Vati Swapadam Dikam. Hey Krishna Karna Sindhu, Deen Bandhu, Jagat Pate, Gopesha Gopi, Kukanda, Radha Kanda, Namosite, Pratta Kanchana Gaurangi, Radha Vanda, Vaneshwari, Rishabhanos, Devi, Pranamami, Kari Priye, Kanchha Kalpatru, Vishya, Kupa Sindhu, Vya Evacha, Patitanam, Bhavne, Vyo, Vaishna Devi, Namo Namaha, Namo Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishtaya, Kutale, Sri Mati Pakti Vedanta, Swami, Tiramane, Namaste, Saraswati Devi, Gauravani, Macharane, Vishesha Shiva, the Pasha Disha Darne, Sri Krishna Jagadi, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Atreta Jagada, Sri Vasadi, Lord of Kavinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Jaya Rama, Punjabi Hari, Jaya Rama, Rama. Punjabi Hari, Kuti Jana Valla Bhai, Shivara Dhari, Kuti Jana Valla Bhai, Shivara Dhari, Yashoda Nandana Bhaja Jagara Shikana, Yashoda Nandana Bhaja Jagara Shikana, Yamuna Tira Bhaja Okay. Hare Krishna, uh, we are completing chapter 12 today, we, uh, do the last verse and then we can move on to Right. Yeah, I can see. It's come now because, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, I'll be reading from here. So let's just chant three times, read the translation once, and uh, then discuss the purport. Yetu dharma amrita ida yato dharma shraddha Satsang <laughs> Those who follow this imperishable path of devotional service and who completely engage themselves with faith, making me the supreme goal, are very, very dear to me. Okay, this is like the final word in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, the last word. It's not the last chapter and it's not the end of the book, but those who uh, engage themselves with faith in whom? In Krishna, making him the supreme goal are very, very dear to me. So this engagement of the senses in uh, activities connected to Krishna is crucial to Bhakti Yoga. Lot of people have this idea that Bhakti means is just something sentimental in the head. But that's not uh, uh, how Bhakti Yoga is meant to be. It's a science like any of the other spiritual paths, like in Ashtanga Yoga, you go through different stages and there are different postures you have to do and then you do Pranayama and so on. Or with Jnana Yoga, you study certain texts thoroughly and you reach a particular position, uh, you reach a certain understanding. Or with Karma Yoga, you do all your prescribed duties, maybe sometimes over lifetimes, develop detachment, develop a higher goal. Similarly, Bhakti Yoga, basically, the beginning and the end of the whole thing is action in Krishna consciousness. You take your senses and engage them. 
the five obvious, uh, the gross senses and also the five subtle senses. The five subtle senses are the ones that are um, the Gyanendriyas who are absorbing knowledge through the eyes, nose, etc. But also the five, the hands, the legs, the mouth, the so on. So you basically take all your senses and engage them in the service of Krishna because sense control and mind control, subduing the mind in order to make it devoted to Krishna, this is crucial. And someone who's accomplished this, basically he's, he's, Krishna is uh, confirming, he's very, very dear to me. Can you read this purport, please? At least the first big chunky paragraph. Uh, in this chapter, from verse 2 to the end, from my Avesya Mano Yema, fixing the mind on me through A to Dharma Mritam Idam, this religion of eternal engagement, the Supreme Lord has explained the process, the, the processes of transcendental service for coaching. Such processes are very dear to the Lord and he accepts a person engaged in them. The question of who is better, one who is engaged in the path of impersonal Brahman or one who is engaged in the personal service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, was raised by Arjuna, and the Lord replied to him so explicitly that there is no doubt that devotional service to the Personality of Godhead is the best of all processes of spiritual realization. In other words, in this chapter it is decided that through good association one develops attachment for pure devotional service and thereby accepts a bona fide spiritual master and from him begins to hear and chant and observe the regulated principles of devotional service with faith, attachment and devotion and thus becomes engaged in the transcendental service of the Lord. This path is recommended in this chapter. Therefore, there is no doubt that devotional service is the only absolute path for self-realization for the attainment of the Supreme Personality of God. The impersonal conception of the Supreme Absolute Truth as described in this chapter is recommended only up to the time one surrenders himself for self-realization. In other words, as long as one does not have the chance to associate with a pure devotee, the impersonal conception may be beneficial. In the impersonal conception of the Absolute Truth, one works without creative result, meditates and cultivates knowledge to understand spirit and matter. This is necessary as long as one is not in the association of a pure devotee. Fortunately, if one develops a dad, one develops directly a, a desire to engage in Krishna consciousness in pure devotional service, he does not need to undergo step-by-step -step improvements in spiritual realization. Devotional service, as described in the middle six chapters of Bhagavad Gita, is more congenial. One need not bother about materials to keep body and soul together because by the grace of the Lord, everything is carried out automatically. Okay, this impersonal conception of the Supreme Absolute Truth as described in this chapter is recommended only up to the time one surrenders himself for self-realization. In other words, as long as one does not have the chance to associate with a pure devotee, the impersonal conception may be beneficial. Uh, in other words, okay, with the, uh, in the impersonal conception of the absolute truth, one works without fruitive results, meditates and cultivates knowledge to understand spirit and matter. This is necessary as long as one is not in the association of a pure devotee. Fortunately, if one develops directly a desire to engage in Krishna consciousness in pure devotional service, it does not need to undergo step-by-step -step improvements in spiritual realization. Right. This impersonal conception of the truth is still extremely popular with the majority of the world's population that even turns towards spirituality. It's very popular mainly because people are so fried with the material world uh, and they are so fried with other people that they don't want an object of worship that has a form or that in any way reminds them of another human being. So that's why they don't want a personal God. They're just so fried that it suits them because in this impersonal conception, there is no fruitive desires. So that is, they figured out that it is these fruitive desires that has given them so much trouble and uh, led to cheating experiences, disappointment, grievance and so on. So they're fine with that, but they're too uh, hesitant to approach a personal form of the Lord 
because they associate him with all the bad experience they have had in this world and which is with you know with other human beings so that's why tell me is that has uh, does the impersonal conception of the lord hold any attraction for you has it ever um, held any attraction uh, as in yeah like in i think previous before i i would say like before i got into uh, bhakti or you know like krishna uh, consciousness path or this i would say like i used i, I did have like i used to listen to a lot of like lectures from people who you know they expanded that philosophy on that like on youtube or whatever so i i would say like yeah like i did have some type of um, i i did have some attraction like some attraction to it at the beginning uh, i think this was when like you know this was like literally there was a time when i didn't have any spiritual like interest or inclination at you know growing up and all that stuff so for me like the beginning or the first like starting point starting of spirituality or like this path it kind of came from that place actually and then after doing a lot of uh, like spending a lot of time trying to see different things like you know seeing different paths and all that and i came into this after that but i do feel like um some like i i do feel like sometimes uh so there are like lot of things even like even when when we are studying bhakti like going through bhagavad gita or um listen to like bhagavatam or even like if we listen to like lectures from like the you know like bhakti uh, teachers or whoever is there's a lot, there is still a little bit of that um, you know of, there's that in, that little some some parts of the impersonal philosophy are also within our philosophy as well which we kind of accept for sure, oh, sure, sure. Accept, like yes, sure. Say, because i think the uh, so, conclusion is that the lord uh, is that's what is it there that's in what the, yeah. yeah that's why uh, uh, no actually uh, because that's what i guess maybe that's what chaitanya was not over said no like simultaneous oneness and difference so it's like yeah. we're accepting we're accepting both it's not like we're, it's not like people are completely just only like blind faith blindly believing in uh, krishna just because he is god just, just because he is god we're blindly believing in that idea it's not because of that um and it's also not just only because you know uh, you know it's not also because of like you know the idea that you know krishna like the idea that krishna is everywhere is also the same thing as you can say it, we are all one in one sense in the impersonal philosophy or such if you want to make that yeah. comparison so it's not like it's kind of like taking both things together and trying to merge both and uh, you know uh, i uh, guess that actually uh, this uh, impersonal yeah. philosophy i think the video stuff for advaita vad as you said it is uh, everything is one really yeah. much shankaracharya advaita advaita philosophy fine what uh, the bhakti path and chat uh, uh, that he is just qualifying it and clarifying that concept a little more by yeah one is not a quantity it's like a drop of ocean water is salty like the ocean so it is same in quality but in quantity same in terms of its volume and it's it's just a drop of saline water from the ocean whereas the ocean is a huge uh, mass of water uh sridhar i think in between no like audio just like cut in between but yeah, i got most of what he said i got most of what he yeah, said yeah i also so so yeah also uh, can you yeah, can, can you hear the me now yeah yeah i can hear you i can hear you can you hear me hello uh, i think you got this stuff here yeah okay, we will just wait there is one 
فيها التكنيك المطلوب شيء اي بلي اميرا يا كان يا مي اي وي يور وويس از كان كاتينج ان بيتوين اتس نوت ذير Can you hear me? Hello? I think there is some issues. Uh, Switch it here either. as we were describing in this particular chapter we're talking about the impersonal conception and if the impersonal conception you know there is like it's the you know there's like we said like you know in terms of quality like one and the same for terms of quantities you know there's a big there's a difference there so, okay. i think Did you see I uh you got this up? Yeah, yeah. Actually, the internet went in between for me. Oh, the okay, internet okay. had fluctuating, maybe. The weather yeah, the that's... Weather, so I had to reconnect right now. Okay, yeah, now it's clear. I... Now it's clear. Yeah, yes. I... that's why I thought, yeah. I thought maybe it was a network issue. So... So... Yeah, yeah, it is. No, so just, just remember one thing, this business about being one in quality, but uh, different in quantity, that's specifically uh, what is meant by that achintya bhed abhed. You know, it's coming okay. straight from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Ach achintya meaning is inconceivable. How bhed abhed, that is we are different and yet we are the same. Because we are different in quantity, but we are the same in quality. That's inconceivable. Inconceivable meaning it's fantastic. It's great. It's fantastic. It's amazing. That at one level we are the same as the Lord, and yet we are just not the Lord at all because He's just so much more powerful. So that was the qualification that uh, Lord Chaitanya brought to the general Advaita understanding. So we are not quarreling yeah. with anybody. He's just kind of uh, clarifying. You know, I uh, just two weeks back I had gone to uh, Kaladi. This is the yeah uh, Shankaracharya. Yeah, I've also been. So this is uh, because I've I also gone been to, there. Yeah, I've gone with my family, you know, like with my mom, my mom, dad, uh, my sister also was there. Yeah, uh, we went there. It was it was like a very uh, a unique like it was a pretty unique experience. Like there's a uh, uh, one is that you see the same types of monks also like chanting with beads in the temple and all that stuff. And also, yeah. uh, you will see like, a, I think there, there was like a school, there's a Sanskrit school also next to that. People are like chanting there and all that yeah. stuff. And, um, but it's also very interesting how, you know, even Shankaracharya's like life and everything about him, like, is so personal for a lot of the impersonals like that idea of uh, like Shankaracharya like like life and his journey and everything about him is what in one sense also attracts people to Advaita uh, and what uh, you know a lot of the philosophy or like a lot of people who come into Advaita also I think they get attracted by Shankaracharya's his journey his life and what he did and all that stuff what short life no it's it yeah. was a very short life 
38 or something. 38 or 40. 33. 33. 33. Oh, I see. Okay, okay right. Uh, and he traveled extensively across India in that, that period, no? Yeah, that's what even my dad was asking me. How did he even like, go all the way across four corners of the, of the country? Yeah, yeah. Come back in such a, such a small, like, I don't know. This is like very science fiction and all that stuff, but you know, like <laughs> uh, he would probably have powers of uh, teleportation or something, you know, because <laughs> and yeah, also yeah. like not feeling like he didn't. I don't. I don't. He doesn't seem to have gotten sick or anything. So uh -huh. Which is also kind of uh, crazy, but yeah. Yeah, that's. I just want to mention that because that's all. Like I, like I went there last week to that. Uh, it's basically the uh, where you're born, and also where his mother, mother Samadhi area also is there, and where he got it's very peaceful, back. no? Very, it's very, very, peaceful. very, very peaceful yeah. by the river. Yeah, yeah, I've been there long back. Uh, and there's that river also. That it's a, a Peria River basically. That, yeah, Peria uh, River exactly. That comes there. And I think there's a story where I think the mother wanted to go. Mother wanted to go to the river, but she couldn't do it or something. I don't know, something happened. She couldn't do it. And so? I think he diverted the river to to where they stay and all that stuff. So through his special powers? Through special his powers. Power. Yeah. So he did it that way. And then this it's the same. Then there's that lake where he got bitten. By a crocodile and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. So that also we went. We dipped our leg in the in that uh, river and all that stuff. And uh, but yeah, I mean it's it's uh, it, and then right next. But the one of the amazing parts about that place is like right next to that that place is a is a Krishna temple. Right okay. next to that. Right. Just like the temple is kind of attached to that. Uh, Pata. Pata. Yeah, but it is kind of, uh, but I think also uh, Shankarjare was also like very devotionally minded as well. Like he kind of also, you know, like I think he did, he created like Bhaja Govindam and the devotional songs. Right, well. right. At the end, that was his conclusion. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, that's what, that was very interesting for me also, like seeing that. And the yeah, interesting yeah. part of, about the Krishna temple, I, I went inside. It was kind of it looked like the, it was kind of closed at that time. Uh, so each pillar of that temple is like donated by some person from somewhere. I else. see. Wow. So, and the name of the person and the location from where they are uh, donated that donated that pillar from is written in the door. So most of the people end up. I could see most of them are from like Chennai, from Chennai basically. They all donated that amount of money. There are a lot of people from, especially from, I think, the southern, like, I guess a lot of Kanadigas, a lot of, like, like North Indians, a lot of people, like, a lot of different from various places and all that, they were all there in that Shankaracharya Mat there. So it was quite, uh, it was quite interesting. What is it? How come your parents went there? They go every year or something? No, no, no. They, actually, they, uh, I think my mom wanted to go. She uh, she she always been fascinated by uh, Shankaracharya right. and, uh, and the place. So, uh, so she wanted to go, and so I think so. She and my uh, my dad they had gone a couple of months back. So on the occasion of my sister coming last week, we all decided we'll also go there and see. The very nice. Uh -huh. so, but one thing is like very like you said like a very peaceful place and. It's like, you know, like in, it just, it reminded me of like some old sensory Kerala where, you know, uh -huh. you have these old fam families and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where everything is so like minimalistic and it's very like, you know. Austere, like, austere, yeah. simple. Yeah, simple. Like it's not so, like nowadays and all, if you go to, if you see, if you're living in Kochi and all that stuff, Everything is highly commercialized. Like you walk out anywhere, there's like you know, like there are buildings. There's like a lot of this metros. There's right. a lot of things. A lot of things in this place. People are on the phones. 
people are racing, riding cars, they are happy. Here it's like very peaceful. Like it's just like one is like the rivers there, nature is there. People are like chanting mantras, like all different mantras. I'm not sure what mantras are, but they're like loudly chanting mantras in that place. So it was just, the energy was very nice actually. How much time did it take from Ernakulam to get there? It's actually uh, from like it's very it's only like five minutes from the airport. So if oh. you're so from our place to the airport is like it takes about an hour. So okay. from so totally it would have taken like one hour fifteen minutes. Okay. Hour, 15 and minutes. how much time did you spend there? I think we spent maybe one and a half hours. You one didn't they, they didn't give anything to eat like there is no place where you can buy some food no. Um, no, we didn't have, no, there is, yeah, there is one place, but we didn't have food there. We actually, we had our breakfast and then we went to the temple and then we came back after that. So there's oh. also, right next to the temple is also the Sanskrit Academy. Or the ah, Sanskrit right. University. Academy, yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, Sanskrit, Sanskrit University. University. I think it's like a Sanskrit University, no? Kali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there a lot of people come in, they're like, studying uh, Sanskrit from there and all that stuff. So my mom and my sisters, they went, they were able, they just went inside, I guess, that place and they were like going different flows and seeing the different okay. things and stuff. So me and my dad didn't go, you were <laughs> tired. So uh -huh. inside and all that. But yeah, they went, so they were telling me like, you know, they are different flows. And, and like, in, inside that main um, the temple of there's like the story that's they'll give you like this uh, this uh, picture like type story it's, a, it's on the wall so on the wall the whole story of Shankarachar is written from one end of the wall to the other side and all that stuff so you can read all of that right it's like also, like murals are there any paintings yeah yeah, yeah 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 that's nice exactly. so that was yeah that was no that was that was, that was, that was a very interesting it had a very good energy uh -huh. Nice. Nice that you could go there. And did you get, uh, were there, was there any gift shop or anything? No. There was one shop outside. Um, there was one, like, it's not a, I don't know, it's like a very small shop where you can buy uh, various items, I guess, related to this, like the temple. And there's like kids' books, and there's like, we bought one small statue. I uh, got one statue of Shankaracharya. She uh -huh. got one statue and all that stuff. But also, there's like, the, uh, people also have like weddings and all that stuff. Like, there's, oh, really? a, there's, a wed there's a wedding hall. Okay. So, I think the wedding was not, I was, it seemed like it's some, somebody from, not from here, it looked like somebody from maybe some different state. So, a lot, the whole, like, the whole family and all of there, they were like having right. their wedding and all that but it was a good experience though, like just to see that place and that energy wise. Great. Really nice. Actually, as you said, it's amazing that he walked such distances all around India, yeah. you know, the four dicks, the four, yeah. uh, the dicks, uh, because the, even uh, when I went to Srinagar about Dal Lake, when I was doing the boating, they were pointing to a big hilltop uh, Shankaracharya temple. There's no deity there, but he is supposed to have meditated there. But there were just too many steps to climb, so I avoided it with my uh, injured knee. But that's like uh, 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 something attractive for devotees who go uh, all the way to Srinagar. So basically, he went there. He went to yeah. the north, he went to Dwaraka in the west, he went to Puri in the east, and then, of course, in the south. That's nice, yeah. And those, these places are rare with this kind of energy now. It's like you said, it's also commercial everywhere else. Even the, like, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be but like, even like a lot of the temples, like, um, you know, so many temples, I would say, like, now have become like so, they've lost that, that charm about them in that sense. Where, you yeah, know, yeah. Like, old, in that, fact, that yeah, in fact, even in many ISKCON temples, it's hard to pray. Because there's so much noise and light and oh, color cool. and decoration, you can watch amazed and appreciate. <clears throat> I 
and uh, recite some mantras or try and chant. But the way we can uh, uh, fold, uh, close our eyes and fold our hands and pray in some of the ancient temples, you know, where the Garbha Griha or the Sanctum Sanctorum is very quiet and there's just the deity and you. That's not possible in an ISKCON temple unless you go at a time when it's deserted. Even then, uh, until you get used to the ISKCON uh, way of this, of course, a logic to it, the deity, uh, the splendor of the deities, it's like they're on a stage for show. I've heard this comment from people coming from traditional backgrounds. You know, it's nice to frame the picture and put it. But when you go into a temple, it's more like they're there on a stage. They're, it's yeah. like it's a grand like a, show. Like you said, the show, it looks, it feels like a, like a show that you're trying to go to. Whereas, yeah. like, uh, in some of, I wouldn't say, like, in, there are so many other temples, like, even in Kerala, also, like, so many temples are there, where you, like, people, there's, like, a culture of, like, people know, okay, you go to the temple, you don't make any noise. You just go peacefully, pray, and then come out. You don't have to... Um, yeah. I guess, I, I don't know. I think that it would be, like, it would be really... Uh, it would be good if that culture also existed, like, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I definitely hear the, the, the... It's more about not making any sound, going very yeah. quiet. Ancient temples here are like that. You don't do kirtan, you don't sing. Uh, some people pray loudly. Uh, actually, it is funny because I went to the Padmanabha Swami temple here. I rarely go because of the difficulty in walking on those stone. Uh, there are platforms you have to climb to get darshan. And the crowds, they kind of push you down. So I joined the queue. This is about like maybe uh, one month ago since we had a gap in our, so it's like one month now. And the, uh, the devotee standing directly behind was going on, reading from a book. It seemed to me like it was like Tamil uh, stotrams or uh, prayers written specifically to Lord Vishnu. I didn't recognize the stotram that was going on, reading and I said, oh, nice to have a devotee who's actually come to pray and who's not just here. Like many of them were frankly like all dressed up in their finery and so on and joking and giggling and laughing, uh, family people. Finally, we got on the mandapam and it was the same guy in front of me. And suddenly it was, I don't want to make fun. He started praying loudly in English. He put aside his book and he started praying in English. And uh, it was like uh, you could hear everything he was praying for. Oh Lord, may I get the job that I'm trying for? May I clear the first interview? Please let me clear the second interview. Like, like a detailed shopping list. And and uh, it reminded me a little of my grandfather was like that, my mother's father. He would go and stand in the Paipomodu Shiva temple and, you know, like say my second daughter, uh, the, 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 you know, the situation there, please improve. Her husband's lost his job. He's become an alcoholic. And people in whole of Trivandrum came to know that Mother Vanayar is having some serious trouble in the second daughter's marriage. He's very worried about it. But this young man, when he came, what I'm saying is, I guess we all pray, uh, we all do go and pray for uh, our needs, uh, you know? Yeah, and wants, like, uh, but, yeah, our wants. Our but fears. nobody actually, nobody actually, like, goes to the temple because they want to see, like, see the, see the Lord and, like, that's, actually love and display their love to the Lord. That's the thing, that's the thing, because all this time while he was in the queue in front of me, so patient, he was only reciting these Tamil stotras, Tamil or Sanskrit or whatever. And I thought, okay, here is someone who's really come just to glorify the Lord. The minute he got onto the mandapam, the whole mood changed. And because it is in English, I could, uh, you know, even more than Malayalam, I could follow everything he was asking for, like desperately in the few moments, like the shopping list you give across the counter, you know, I need one of this and one of that and, you know, one, one packet of surf and... So what to do? I guess the jiva is like we are all trapped with our material concerns and anxieties and it's really hard to rise above that level. I mean, that's, that's, that was my takeaway from that whole situation. It's... But also, yeah, but at the same time, uh, even though, like, even though we know that 
it's like there's a there's a state higher than that also uh, we can't like uh, we can't like we can't tell to so you can't tell people that oh it's what you're doing is wrong yeah <laughs> because even yeah. that also is in one sense that also is kind of right like what they're doing also like they even though they're asking for something from the lord and the lord will obviously like give them what they want uh, most likely will give them what they want and what but, they deserve or yeah so but uh, because as long at least they like they are approaching the lord they at least have that respect where they are approaching exactly. around that level so at least i mean that is the uh, because like even like i think krishna says in the in the gita in the gita also he says no like out of millions of millions of people only one will at the end like understand me understand me understand truly. me truly like nobody yeah. else will, uh you know that even sometimes you know, i also feel like that at times like you know even amongst all the people even the ones who are praying to krishna sometimes when krishna is uh, and i'm sure everybody has some materialistic desire even i also have like a lot of materialistic desires <laughs> deep within even if i don't say it loudly like deep inside like there'll be some materialistic desires i will like want like you know i'll want like one apartment this and that and so krishna will like yeah you still are you're not saying every anybody but you still have something so you know but who is that one person who doesn't have any desires at all and is like desireless and is able to like and at one level unless these material areas like this guy was praying for uh, that job or the interview and all that unless this is all sorted out it's difficult to even be peaceful and focus on steady worship of the lord if you're in anxiety you're going to be fired a whole family is dependent on you you know money won't be enough naturally where are you going uh, uh, to steadily worship the lord so at one level it is Uh, only fair that they pray for the lord support to sort out these material uh, compulsions or whatever other requirements and then i have also met the odd devotee who says oh, i don't pray for anything at all now that can also be a kind of uh, ahankar you know like a false arrogance i just don't pray i go there i used to go through a mood like that but uh, later i think it's some kind of artificial Uh, arrogance to to take that line because like you said there are desires oh i'd love to go back here i'd love to do this i'd love to do that oh, please let that damn flat get sold you know upstairs so that it, i can be rid of these and even if you don't pray for it krishna says in uh, i think it is in chapter 5 that he can smell our desires in the heart just like a person can smell a rose by putting it near his nose so he knows you know crooked desires honest and uh, uh, decent desires everything he knows he can smell it and then he grants it according to our uh, not just our what we deserve but also what is good for us and to what extent we we kind of like uh, taken shelter of him so what the 12th chapter is saying is uh, really what came up even as early as the second chapter if you look at chapter 2 verse 64 There's sixty-one. Uh, From then he is saying, make a yeah. connection. Uh, make a connection with me. You know, mat para uh, here. Tani sarvani samyamya. Sixty-one, two point sixty-one, for example. Yeah, tani sarvani samyamya yukta sita mat para. Mat para really means connect with me. Connect with me. And uh, such a person keeping his senses under full control. fixes his consciousness upon me is known as a man of steady intelligence this is 6.1 the mat paraha verse mat man meaning me paraha come close to me connect with me and then kind of anchor your mind on to me and my instructions if you turn a couple of pages and come to 2.64 this is the famous verse where how you can get the mercy of the lord it is raga dvesha vimukta is the vishayan indriya ischaran Atmavashir vidhe atma prasadam adigachati. Prasadam here means the mercy of the Lord. You know the the he the, you catch the interest of the Lord. What do you have to do? You have to rise above attraction and aversion, raga and dvesha, and bring your senses under control. And basically, you 
do all this by following, trying to follow the instructions the Lord has given in the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavatam. That you get the mercy of the Lord. With this mercy, the next verse tells us, Prasade Sarva Dukkana. What happens with that mercy? You stop getting bewildered or affected by all the dukkhas that come in this world. And the threefold miseries of material existence, they don't affect. And then the intelligence becomes very steady. And the same logic, once the intelligence becomes steady, it says uh, we become peaceful. And only when we are peaceful can we be happy. And it ends with like a rhetorical question in verse 66. How can someone who is not peaceful ever know what happiness is? So there's a connection. You bring your senses under control. You bring your mind under control. Therefore, you rise above uh, the two extremes, attraction and aversion to all situations. How do you do all this? Over time, you subdue your mind and fix it on the Lord and his instructions and connect, connect, connect with him. So then you start attracting his mercy. He's there. He helps you through difficult situations. Sometimes he kind of uh, slaps you or uh, arranges uh, situations, experiences that are hurtful, but they help us to grow. And then you again connect with him. So then you attract his mercy. Once you attract his mercy, what happens? Your steady intelligence is basically established which is not affected by the threefold miseries, things that are going to come our way every day, some new problem, this is a material world. Once that mind, steady intelligence is established, then you become peaceful, and with peacefulness you become, comes happiness. And the, uh, the verse that, and then the following verse, if you go to two, no, it doesn't come here. Uh, yeah, 2.68. Sorry, 2.66. Yeah, one who is not connected with the Supreme, in, see this, one who is not connected with the Supreme, he cannot have that steady intelligence, steady mind. Without it, there is no peace. And with there is, when there is no peace, how can there be any happiness? These threefold miseries, just it's like a small point, but uh, these are kind of basics. Like we talked a little earlier of the Achintya Bheda Bheda Tattva, Achintya Bheda Abheda Tattva is that we are uh, uh, same in the in quality, the Jiva. We individuals are same in the quality as, as the Lord. That is, we are also spirit, not matter. But not the same in quantity because the Lord is so much larger and more powerful and so on. And uh, like the case of a drop of water from the ocean and the ocean, both are salty. This is Achintya Veda Veda. Means the fantastic conception, the inconceivable fact that we are the same, but we are not the same. We are the same in quality, but not in quantity. Like that, these threefold miseries, what are called the, uh, the three kleshas, kleshas of the damned nuisances, the damned pains, the miseries, one is what our own body and mind. You know, our body tricks us and makes us take wrong decisions or keeps on hounding us with grievances and with things that went unfulfilled or hatred for somebody, whatever, hurt, real grief, sorrow. Our body, you know, we develop diseases and so on, whatever. The body gains weight, the body develops diabetes. So this is our own body and mind. Then there are things that miseries that are caused by other living entities to us. It can be the tiny mosquito. It can be a dog that bites us. It can be other human beings that say hurtful things or stab us or kick us or punch us. Any of these. This is the second type of misery that comes out in. And the third type of misery is natural disasters. Flood, famine, fire, drought. Just see, I think in Udupi, uh, some very big uh, restaurant owner and his family were sleeping peacefully. There was a short circuit and the, uh, the air conditioner exploded. The whole place caught fire and was burnt in no time. I think the family were uh, rescued, but the man by then had suffocated to death. Some shetty, some shetty guy. So these are natural, not natural calamities as in the case of a landslide in Idukki and, you know, floods in uh, Rishikesha, Aridwar, but again, things beyond our control through modern electronic devices. 
So these are the three types of misery that keep coming at us. And uh, someone who is above all this, like these things happen, but they just learn not to react because they take it as the material world. The Lord is really peaceful, uh, really pleased with them because he feels that then they can get out of this tangle and cycle of birth and death. That's why he is pleased because they can get out and come back to him in the spiritual world. So, so uh, this point that we have to connect with him, we have to overcome the uh, duality of love and hate, cold and heat, uh, fat and thin, black and white, etc. We just rise above our strong reactions to all this uh, and then make our mind steady. Once the mind is subdued, then automatically we fix that mind on the Lord and try more and more to connect with him. I mean, while well, we have to learn how to engage our senses, otherwise they are going to drive us here and there. This way we attract his mercy. With the mercy comes a steady mind. With the steady mind means we stop reacting to constant uh, pains and miseries. And once we stop reacting uh, to uh, uh, these kind of pains and miseries, then the mind is uh, steady intelligence established. We get um, peace and then we get happiness. So this is the theme that was started in the second chapter and he's still at it in the 12th chapter. So this so is actually, really kind of a... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just want to add also. Like, uh, so I also feel like, um, you know, like to develop that level of... Actually, I feel sometimes, I don't know, I mean, maybe it's like to have that pure love can be very uh, well, like you know, you know, in this time. Um, but definitely, there were people who have been able to cultivate cultivate that love uh, uh, for uh, for Krishna. But I also feel like you know, before like some because sometimes I feel like before even like focusing on the love part of it, yeah, like it's important to also first focus on yourself, like like uh, like ourselves. So like you know, with what, you know, how, uh, you know, like, uh, two practices that can, like, you know, that you're able to, like, uh, help you to, like, maybe control your mind, control what you speak and your habits sure. and things like that. And sure. then, because I'm not sure if I heard this from somewhere, but I remember somebody saying in some video, but like you were saying that, you know, in this, in this movement or this thing, like, you know, sure, love of Krishna is very important. That's the goal. But not everybody, like, reaches that. And so the reason why they don't reach it is a very simple thing. Like, people don't focus on their own selves first. Like, you need to, fo like, how can you love yeah. something if you still have attachments for, you know, something else? Like, you know, it's, that thing is there. So the simple thing is, like, you know, you let go of those attachments. And then you, your love will slowly develop faster, 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 till it becomes fully in love with Krishna. Like you know, even like today I, I was watching the Vishnu say this podcast, and they were on some uh, I don't know which canto, but they were on one of the cantos where uh, one of the chapters where it discusses about the perf the, the perfect uh, perfect being or something or the characteristics of a perfect being, and they were describing like how. A, 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 sanya, a like person who takes sannyas needs to like they need to like not have any attachments. If they even for clothes, the cloth they the, the cloth they wear can only just be a loin cloth, and that's it. And they can maybe uh, if they want they can carry like you know like something to hold water, but essentially they have to uh, keep like they have to live like beggars basically, and like travel from one village to another village to another village every day and it's also mentioned that they can't spend one day at one village like they can't spend more than one day in one more place. than three days yeah more or than three so days on. and then they have to leave so it's kind of like developing that level of atta detachment in like when you're able to create that in the external environment then it's easier to like create that in the in your mind also that detachment and then with that, you're able to like uh, develop lots of this stuff. But to do that is is very difficult. So, and also, also in uh, the Bhakti Yoga tradition, there is this concept that's given of Yukta Vairagya. 
that is you don't necessarily wear only a loin cloth and carry only a bottle of water you do what's necessary but you use it in the service of krishna and don't become attached you may use a computer you may take a flight to travel but deep down you have to keep a check on yourself that you can manage without all these but why you are doing it is if you are actually going to spread his instructions you know the amount it because after all we are not living in shankaracharya ramanuja acharya's age or madhvacharya where you walk yeah. around the walking sanyasis are there there is bhakti mark swami and there are uh, there is loknath swami with this uh, uh, what is that called the bullock cart the padayatra yeah. that's there that's one aspect but uh, uh, kaliyuga and uh, that we use these things they are also coming from krishna it it, it is a uh, razor's edge they are walking because if you are going to use the latest apple or whatever computers or at one time it was this blackberry phone and it's nice you can give a class to the whole world you can get an update on a particular topic you can get someone else's view on a particular shloka it is going to lead to a lot of feeling of power and it is going to lead to attachment to these devices so it's a razor's edge the sanyasis are walking there because uh, uh, the yukta vairagya means yukta means you connect everything vairagya but remain detached you take all these uh, uh, facilities you don't say no like the uh, advaitins you know for whom all this is maya and they avoid it that's their path but that's not the path of the uh, uh, gaudiya vaishnava madhva sampradaya that uh, is corn and prabhupad come from which is because otherwise why did prabhupad he could have he knew very hard times in vrindavan you know as a, uh, as a struggling sanyasi he went through all that he didn't ch- he could have gone back to his family with the wife and so many ch- grown up sons but he felt he had to keep up his guru's instruction and the mission to start and spread this in the west so his days in vrindavan were awful you know trying to sell some magazine uh, in the bitter cold getting pushed down by a cow barely anything to eat writing the bhagavatam begging people for a passage to go abroad and then starting the movement and once it started he took whatever facilities were given to him without detachment but used it back in the service of the lord so yukta vairagya like achintya bheda bheda tatva yukta vairagya is that sure we need to be extremely detached from all this stuff but at the same time not by shunning it you take it and use it back in the service of krishna because it is like taking ganges water and pouring it back in the ganges because we accept that even the computer that's come because of the brain of some great scientist it finally that ability comes from krishna so take it and use it like now what we are doing to discuss the bhagavad gita to read the bhagavad gita you know on this ibeda base so the yukta vairagya it doesn't mean that you necessarily become detached and then become attached to the lord in fact the two happen simultaneously and therefore even in chapter 2 uh, this famous famous verse 2.59 vishaya vinivartante niraharya sadhihina go back to 2.59 you will see uh, it, yeah 2.59 the two happen simultaneously the detachment from our material desires and the stronger attachment to krishna see vishaya vinivartante nirahara sadhe i mean you can deny yourself food and the things you like to eat uh, and this way feel that you are developing detachment you know you can shun all these things but the taste remains deep down then what to do so only way to reduce that taste is to simultaneously keep developing a higher taste so in our bhakti tradition the two happen simultaneously as we develop it's like saying those who were very fond of meat and meat items how to get them off the meat they will simultaneously introduce something that tastes very much like meat but it is purely vegetarian it's coming from the cow's milk it is due to krishna which is paneer dishes big chunks of soft succulent paneer may be made the tandoor way so gradually gradually they develop such taste for this in fact these things are done in temples to help people get over their addiction to meat and non vegetarian 
we don't say we don't slam them and say completely stop yeah they should stop on the one hand but what happens if that taste remains we on a simultaneously give them a higher taste for something that's perfectly sattvic offered to the lord even in fact which is a soft succulent big chunks of paneer done tandoor skewed on that tandoor stick you know with capsicum and mushroom and whatever so that gradually they completely lose the taste for the meat the yukta vairagya is a kind of like a great brain child of bhakti siddhanta and that the, the two should happen simultaneously a higher taste meaning more more attachment to the lord other side the detachment uh, from mundane material desires because the danger in only focusing on the detachment before coming to the attachment is the taste hasn't gone away so you get the slightest opportunity and the senses become highly agitated which is what happened to vishwamitra muni which was have what happened to shaubari muni who done so much austerity and yoga yoga under the river for uh, decades and years to control his senses he but at the end because uh, deep down there was no higher taste for a higher uh, some some very beautiful lord or whatever he opened his eyes and saw two fish meeting and that agitated his senses so he came out from the water and then pursued a life with uh, a lot of interaction with the female sex so uh, this is just something to remember that it's a little different in the bhakti yoga tradition okay can we stop here now because it's 6 o'clock and then we are going to start chapter 13 which is a big thing that we come up to chapter 13 right is yeah. it okay by you yeah okay by you how yeah. are you placed next saturday yeah we can do next saturday i'm be free we can do it next saturday okay anyway I'll... it was yeah what okay i'll just end the recording